These preseason changes are insane! So many champions have gotten indirect buffs thanks to these new items. Hey what's going on summoners, my name is Crumbs and today we're gonna be giving you all a rundown on the new preseason items. Since these items are still rough around the edges, expect a few stat changes in the upcoming weeks. We'll be covering what the items do, why and if they're powerful, and finally when you should be building them. These new items offer a ton of versatility and power to many champions in the game, so be sure to stay tuned. But let's not waste any more time and dive right in. Starting us off strong in the jungle, we've got the Scorch Claw Pup Starter Item. This will summon a Scorch Claw Pup to assist you as you clear jungle camps. As you kill jungle camps to feed your new pup treats, it'll reach two different tiers. At tier 2, it'll increase your smite damage to 900 and you can smite enemies for 20 to 160 damage and slow them. Once you reach tier 3, your pup will fully evolve and will grant you a passive effect. Plus, your smite will deal 1200 damage to monsters. Over time, you will gain charges or if you kill a camp, you'll reach the max of 100 charges. After this, your next attack on the champion will slow them by a decaying 30% and it will deal 4% of their max HP as true damage. This is a really good jungle item for some assassins that are looking to stick to their targets while also dealing a lot of damage. You could also take this on champions like Karthus, Evelyn, or Kindred. The overall goal of this item is to offer slight sticking power and lots of damage to deal with tankier enemies. For our next jungle item, we've got the Gustwalker Hatchling. This starter item will summon a Gustwalker Hatchling to help you clear jungle camps and will evolve over time as you give it more and more treats. As it's tier 2, it'll evolve your smite to deal 900 damage to monsters, as well as 20 to 160 true damage and slow enemy champions. Once you reach tier 3, your Hatchling will fully evolve and grant you a new passive effect. Rather than provide damage like the Scorch Pup, this one offers a ton of mobility around the map. Your smite will be upgraded to deal 1200 damage and you will gain 45% bonus movement speed when entering a brush. This is increased to 60% for 2 seconds after killing a large monster. You're gonna be building this item on champions that are looking to quickly ambush the enemy or want some help traversing the map. Champions like Hecarim, Kha'Zix, and Rengar can use this item incredibly well thanks to their kits revolving around movement speed and assassination potential. For our final jungle item, we've got the Moss Stomper Seedling. This starter item will summon a Moss Stomper Seedling to help you clear the jungle. It kind of reminds us of a miniature Grom. As you feed it treats, it will evolve over time, and at tier 2, it'll not only increase your smite to 900 damage, but you'll also be able to smite champions for 20 to 160 true damage and a slow. Once you progress your seedling to tier 3, it'll fully evolve and empower your champion. Your smite will be increased to 1200 damage, and you'll gain a new passive effect. After killing a large monster, or after 10 seconds, you'll gain a 75 to 330 HP shield. This shield remains indefinitely and it'll grant you 20% tenacity and slow resistance even after it's broken for 3 seconds. This jungle item is great for champions that are looking to be a little bit tankier and want some help with survivability. If you're a tank jungle player, this is likely to be your default item since it'll be extremely powerful on Sejuani, Nunu, and Zac. Before we continue on to our pre-season itemization guide, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new courses and bootcamp content. If courses and lessons aren't your thing though, don't worry, we have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive right back into the video. Up next, we've got a few new mythic items. Starting us off strong, we've got the new and improved Rod of Ages. Over time, this item will grant you bonus HP, mana, and ability power. After 10 minutes, you will have gained a maximum of 200 HP, 200 mana, and 40 AP, and you'll be given a bonus level. It also offers a unique passive that restores mana equal to 15% of damage taken from champions. On top of this, you'll also gain HP equal to 20% of mana spent up to 15 HP per cast. It will also grant all other legendary items 5 ability haste. 
At the moment, Broad of Ages is very underwhelming compared to the other powerful mythics you can choose from. That being said, if you're a champion that is looking to hyperscale into the late game and spike at the 25 minute mark, then this item could be a decent one for you. Moving on to our next item, we've got Jack Show, the Protean. This item grants you armor and magic resistance over time during champion combat. At max stacks, you become empowered and will drain enemies around you for 3% of your maximum HP. This is inflicted as magic damage and will also heal you. On top of this, your resistances are being increased by 10% until the end of combat. As a mythic passive, it'll grant all other legendaries 5 armor and magic resistance. This item is a great option for champions that are able to sit in the middle of fights and cling to their targets. It'll offer a ton of tank stats and a nice chunk of healing as well as damage. This is likely to be your item of choice on picks like Zac, Sejuani, or even Shen. Diving into our next mythic item, we've got Radiant Virtue. This item will have you transcend upon casting your ultimate. You will increase your max HP by 10% for 9 seconds. Alongside this, you and your allies within 1200 range gain 15 non-ultimate ability haste and heal for 1% of your maximum HP every 3 seconds. This effect scales based on missing health. Its mythic passive grants all other legendary items 100 HP. Overall, this item is going to be a great choice on supportive champions that are naturally tanky and can provide their team with utility. You'll likely be running this one on champions like Nautilus, Shen, or Orn. Moving on to our next item, we've got Heartsteel. This item has been getting a lot of attention lately due to its infinitely scaling HP. It works like a combination of Grasp and Demolish. After a few seconds, you'll charge up an attack on an enemy champion. This attack will deal a percentage of your max HP as physical damage and it'll grant you 10% of that damage as permanent max HP. I'm sure you can all see why this item has gained so much traction. Over the course of the game, you'll be stacking this item constantly and it'll reward you with a ton of health. Plus, its mythic passive grants you 1% increased HP and 6% increased champion size per legendary item. This one will be good on picks like Scion, Ilawi, and maybe even Sejuani Tapu. Last but certainly not least, we've got the reworked Iceborne Gauntlet. This new gauntlet is a decently strong item due to its effects. After using an ability, your next attack will create a slowing field that lasts for 2.5 seconds. Alongside this, the primary target of your attack will be inflicted with a 100% stronger slow and it'll reduce their damage against you by 10% for 2.5 seconds. It'll grant other legendaries 50 HP, 5% tenacity and 5% slow resistance due to its mythic passive. This is a great item on champions that need help sticking the targets to deal damage while also making sure they don't die to the enemy. You'll likely be building this one on champions like Udyr, Shivana, or Poppy. Now before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite Pro Guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what is your favorite change in the preseason? Regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comment section down below what your favorite is and why. Nonetheless, let's dive right back into the video. Moving on to our legendary items, we've got Abyssal Mask. This item will restore mana based on your damage taken from champions as well as HP equal to mana spent up to 15 per cast per second. This isn't even the strongest part, however. It'll also curse nearby enemy champions. This curse will reduce their magic resistance and for each cursed enemy, you will gain magic resistance. This item has potential to be a powerful anti-mage item for a few control mages, but overall, it's a great tool for tank utility picks. You'll see this item being powerful on champions like Amumu, Orn, or Sejuani when paired with a powerful mage. Next up, we've got Ravenous Hydra. This variation reminds us of the old Sword of the Occult, which was pretty much an AD version of Magi's. Per usual, your attacks and abilities will deal AoE physical damage to other enemies. However, you will now gain AD and Omnivamp whenever you kill a minion and two times that amount when you kill a champion, large monster, or siege minion. Upon death, you'll lose 50% of your stacks. This is a powerful snowballing item that you'll likely see on picks like Jax, Ribbon, and Fiora. With a slight lead, they can use this item to push their damage and sustain to the next level. For our next item, we've got the new Randuin's Omen. At the moment, this item is fairly underwhelming because of the stats you get for how expensive it is. 
Upon using its active, you'll slow nearby enemies, reduce incoming damage from attacks, and critical strikes will deal 20% less damage to you. This item only has potential at the moment when facing multiple high damage crit champions like Yasuo Trindamir and the Crit Marksman. Overall, you'll build this on any traditional tank when trying to deal with critical strikes. Moving on to our next item, we've got the Sunfire Aegis. This item is no longer a mythic and it got its stats bumped down a bit. It no longer provides magic resistances, but it gives you a decent amount of armor and HP. It still offers the Immolay passive, which causes you to deal magic damage per second to nearby enemies based off of the amount of Immolate stacks you have. This will be a decent rush for top laners that need both armor and wave clear. You'll occasionally see this item on a few junglers, but if you just need a strong armor item, Frozen Heart is significantly better. Turbo Chem Tank is the magic resistance version of Sunfire. Well, besides the wave clear aspect. It'll provide you with a decent bit of MR, ability haste, and HP for a good price. Alongside this, you'll gain the active, which grants you movement speed toward enemies or enemy turrets. Once you're near them, you'll release a shockwave that'll slow nearby champions. This will be a good item on a few champions that really want the movement speed to engage fights, such as Bruiser Hecarim, Singed, Skarner, and so forth. Last, but certainly not least, we've got the Spear of Shojin. This item is single-handedly making bruisers and fighters powerful at the moment. While it may not be as strong as it used to be, we definitely foresee some nerfs coming to it in the near future. It's a fairly expensive item, but it grants a decent amount of AD, HP, and ability haste. Its Dragon Force passive gives your non-ultimate spells flat ability haste based on your AD, and it varies if you're melee or ranged. The Ability Haste is also decreased on immobilizing spells. Its second passive grants you increased movement speed based on your missing HP as well. Overall, this item is making champions like Riven and Jax extremely difficult to deal with as they're able to constantly keep up with you thanks to their low cooldown mobility spells and their increased movement speed. Before we continue on to the end of the video, climbing can be hard and sometimes you'll need help or just someone to play with. If you want to join an amazing community of people like you that love lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So what are you waiting for? Join us! We've learned a lot, but we're at the end of the video, so we have a few closing thoughts. It's important to keep in mind that these items are extremely tentative because we're in the preseason. Be sure to provide Riot with feedback in any of their threads to ensure that the season starts off strong with good items and gameplay. We know it may feel like they don't listen, but your opinion does matter. If you think something is too strong or too weak, be sure to use your voice so we don't all suffer through the new season together. Be sure to keep climbing your rank when you get the chance so your MMR is better for next season. Take care of yourself, summoners. This is the off season, but it doesn't mean you need to stop trying to improve. Get better, practice, and be ready for the next season. And that sums up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our ProGuides family over at ProGuides.com, where we offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you just won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, good luck on the Rift, and may the LP God smile down upon you.